Hey everybody, this is Ian from Conversation Marketing. Uh, I'm finally doing an update of the Google Analytics video tutorial I did years and years and years ago because if you tried to navigate through Google Analytics using that tutorial at this point you'd be utterly lost. Um, so I'm going to do this tutorial from scratch as if there's nothing uh, as if I've never set up an account before. Um, I'm going to stick to the basics. I will do some updated tutorials for other stuff after this one. So here I am, I'm at www.google.com analytics and just for reference let's pretend that I'm installing Google Analytics code on gibblegibbet.com which already has analytics code but we're just going to pretend for the moment. So I go here, I click sign up now and I've already logged into a fake Gmail account so that I can pretend I'm a brand new person so I will now click sign up and now it's going to ask me for some basic information. Account names, easy enough. We'll just call it Ian's test. And you have to say what kind of website. I'm going to say it's HTTP. Type in my address. Um, now here it asks whether you want to share your Google Analytics data. I personally would do it. Um, they're collecting a lot of data anyway. This is not really, this is not going to do any harm at all. And it also helps them provide you with some comparative data that you can use that I'll talk about another time. Um, so personally, I, I like sharing data anonymously with Google and others because you do get benchmarking numbers then and the benchmarking numbers become more accurate. But that's up to you. If you want to keep the tinfoil hat on, you can say, do not share my Google Analytics data. I'm going to leave it switched on. Uh, yes, I agree, and I click Create Account. So now I'm getting ready to put on uh, to set up my tracking code. If I had an existing account already and I was just adding a new property, you'd have a different interaction here. So that you wouldn't get that first setup screen. You would just go uh, to your dashboard, and then you'd click Add Property, and then you would land on a screen that looks a lot like this. So here I am, uh, and this is where things get really different. Okay, so you'll notice that now I've got this tabbed navigation and I can add new profiles like I was talking about a minute ago. So if I wanted to create another profile with a bunch of websites grouped under it, I could do that. Um, I can set up goals and users and filters and all that stuff here if I want to and I'll show you that in a minute. But the first step is getting your tracking code. And notice if you're doing a mobile app, you can get special code for that. But I'm just going to go down here. Now notice I've got a few different kinds a few different options now for my tracking code and this makes your life a lot easier. Um, one of the biggest things, if you have a really basic site like Gibblegibbet, then you're just going to track a single domain and you just check this box and you're good. I'm not running any AdWords campaigns, I'm not doing anything else. But if you do have, say, an e-commerce site where the checkout is on store.gibblegibbet.com, then you can click this and it automatically edits the code down here if you look um, right here now it says set domain name is gibblegibbet.com. If I change it to this, it removes the set domain name. Um, that's, that's, it's automatically reconfiguring the code for you. If you want to track across multiple domains, so maybe I have www.gibblegibbet.com and then www.ianswebsite.com and for some reason I want to track traffic for both sites together, click this. It adds the set allow linker which lets you track across the different domains. So we're just though here we're just going to say I'm tracking the simplest possible case. Notice if I was running an AdWords campaign I would check this box and then I get a couple other options here. I'd want to log into my AdWords account and link it but I don't need to worry about that here. Um, so now I've got these options set. I can grab this code and I'll paste it into my site. But before I do that I want to show you a couple other options. So if I go to advanced now let me save this first. If I go to advanced, notice I can track even more information. So I can track dynamic pages in a, in a different way. And all this really does is change the instructions. Um, it's not actually changing the code. It's just telling you you can create a, you can create a separate file and then include it dynamically. Uh, if you want to track dynamic content, um, I'll be talking about that in a second, but all that means is there's a template and you're going to put the code in once. Uh, I'll skip Urchin uh, and then AdWords campaigns again, track online ad campaigns from other providers. It'll give you all your steps there. Um, 
and my online campaigns from other providers use different tags, so then I'm going to want to do a whole bunch of things to do some custom tracking. But again, we're in the simplest case here, so we'll stick with that. Um, so now, before I put the code in, and this is just my own personal preference, you can do this after if you want, I'm going to go over here to Profiles and maybe do a couple of quick edits. So under Profile Settings, I'll probably leave all this alone. Um, I could put in a default page. I could put in uh, some specific query parameters to exclude, but I'm going to stick to the simplest case here. Uh, if I have a search box on my site, I'm definitely going to set this to track that because I definitely want to be able to, to see um, what people search for. And then under property settings, I'm going to go and I'm going to link this to my Google Webmaster Tools account. Now I didn't set up a separate Webmaster Tools account for this Gmail account, but if you clicked this, um, what it'll do is it'll bring up Google Webmaster Tools uh, and list all your Google Webmaster Tools properties. And if this site that I'm about to start tracking, if gibblegibbet.com is in that list of sites, then uh, I can just check a box. And what will happen is uh, Google Analytics will start pulling search query data and other data into Google Analytics, and it just saves you from having to jump around. It also lets you fold Google Analytics data into your general reports, um, so it's, it's kind of a good tool to have. So I know I'm kind of going all over the place here, but we now have this, and I have my code. Whoops, sorry. So I'm going to go again and just grab my code. I'm just copying it. And if I have a regular static website, I'm just going to edit each template on my site. Um, so here I'm just editing my home page, which is index.html. And by the way, I'm editing it live on the site. Not always the best idea in the world. Um, but, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And I would just paste the code in, and it would look like this. And notice I'm pasting it in right before the closing body tag. Um, you can put it in right uh, up in the, the head element of your page, up here. You see where it says head, and then head here. I could put it right after this script. Um, there's some small technical differences. If you can't decide, just put it right before the closing body tag. That's your best bet. Um, that way the script will fire after everything else. If it's loading slowly, it won't hurt you. Um, and it, it's less likely to load and track artificial page views. So then I would just save it here, and I would edit these other pages, and I'm good to go. So that's doing it on a regular, what's called a static website that doesn't have any, uh, it's not dynamic, it's not using WordPress or anything. If you're using a WordPress site, and here's the dashboard for conversation marketing, um, there are any number of cool plugins in WordPress where you can just go ahead and use, and use the plugin to uh, just automatically install Google Analytics on the site, and I highly recommend using those. If you have, though, a dynamic site that doesn't have a cool plugin like that, you know, if you're using a different system like Expression Engine or something and there doesn't happen to be a plugin, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go under whatever the template editor is for your system and by the way, if you're not the person who built your site, talk to the person who built your site before you do this. Um, people will not be happy if you just start going in and editing their code. But you want to find probably either the footer or header template. <clears throat> and then you just want to go down to the bottom there and paste in your code. And that's it. When you click save, <clears throat> you can just do that. In the, you can just click save now, and in that one save, it's going to populate across the whole site because it's a dynamic site. This footer is used on every page of the website, uh, and that'll have you all set. Um, again, make sure that you talk to the person who, <laughs> who runs the site, who administers the site, if you're not that person. Um, if you don't know how to do this and you have an IT person or an admin or something, you can send this code to them and ask them to do it. You'll notice it's not real hard. I mean, I just go to my header or my footer, I save it, and it's done across the whole site. Um, then you just want to go back to Google Analytics and check and make sure that it is tracking, because notice right now it says tracking not installed. So you'll want to go and check it again. If it still says tracking not installed, before you start checking for problems, check the time and make sure that it has checked your site since you put in the new tracking code. Um, and then if it's still a problem, if it's still not showing up, 
uh, check to see if your site caches pages or something like that because if it caches pages for better performance uh, then it may not actually update and add the tracking code until you're done uh, until it hits the next time it refreshes its cache so just a couple of quick tips there uh, that's it that's the real quick tutorial on installing Google Analytics. You can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it gets a little more complicated as you try to track more complicated things like uh, e-commerce and uh, you know, jumping across multiple sites. I'll talk more about that in another session. Thanks a lot.